This is the second gen Yamaha VMAX. This particular bike is a 2017. And this is one of the baddest motorcycles ever created. And I can't believe I have one. Can't wait to tell you guys all about it. What's up guys, I'm Sean from SRK Cycles. We have a 2017 Yamaha VMAX. And before I tell you about this bike, let me give you a brief history on the Yamaha VMAX. The Yamaha VMAX has been one of the most legendary motorcycles ever made because in 1985, when it came out, it had a claimed 138 horsepower from its 70 degree V4 engine, which is insane amount of horsepower back in the 80s. It also featured V-Boost, where the butterfly valves would open up at higher RPMs, making that type of ram air, which increased the horsepower by 10%. The original Yamaha VMAX was made, was made with only a few changes throughout the years, but it went from, it had a 22 year streak from 1985 to 2007, and quickly became one of the most iconic motorcycles ever created. Now this is the second gen Yamaha VMAX, and it has 200 horsepower, which is just almost insane just for a motorcycle, but for a cruiser bike or a muscle bike is absolutely insane. Now when looking at the bike, you see it has a lot of the characteristics of the older Yamaha VMAX. It's got these, these intake scoops, which, which is for the V-Boost, which unlike the original ones that were plastic, these are actually hand polished. There's actually a guy, he spends about 45 minutes on each one, hand polishing each one of these intakes from, from the factory. This bike is also a lot bigger than the first gen. Um, when you first hop on the first gen, the first time I hopped on one, I thought it was, you know, pretty narrow, pretty small, which was normal for, a, for an 80s bike. Well, of course, motorcycles now are a lot wider. That's what people want. They want a wider bike, wider back tire. This thing fits the bill. This specific VMAX has a nice set of Acropovic exhaust, which sounds amazing. The cool thing about the VMAX is it knows exactly what it, what it is. There's no identity crisis with the bike where you know maybe with the Goldwing it's like a touring bike but it's a great sport touring bike and you kind of don't know where it fits. VMAX knows exactly what it is. <laughs> you know from the uh, from the giant back tire to the loud exhaust to the bright red paint to the humongous speedometer tachometer and then the giant muscle car muscle car style um, shift light. It's a muscle bike. It knows it. We know it. And if you own this motorcycle there's a moment that you realize that the monster is not underneath your bed. The monster is sitting in your garage. It's waiting for you. In many ways, the VMAX kind of sits in its own unique category. It is 100% a muscle bike, but with, a lot of, with most muscle bikes, you have more you know, cruiser-style ergonomics. This is more of a you know, sport touring type ergonomics where your, your knees are in front of your feet. You know, almost like if you were sitting on a, uh, like a Yamaha FC07 or an FC9 or an, or an MT10. It's extremely comfortable. Now, if there was any bike that you could kind of compare this to, it would be the Ducati Diavel. The Ducati Diavel is a monster. I love that bike. It's fun to drive. But the biggest difference would be the ergonomics, but then also the fact that this thing is basically a no-maintenance motorcycle. Change the oil, put fuel in it, and change the rear tire every couple miles because, you know, you get burnouts and stuff. The valve adjustment interval on this bike is 42,000 miles, which is honestly probably more miles than most people ever ride the bike. The VMAX has fully adjustable front and rear suspension. It's got cooling fins on the rear brakes. It's got three piston Nissan brake brake calipers, five-speed gearbox with a slipper clutch, weighs 683 pounds, unless you're in California, and weighs 686 pounds because they threw some extra smog something on there. And the original MSRP for this motorcycle was $17,999. And my only complaint with this bike is, one, this ridiculous key is clearly a key that you would never take out of the bike you would just leave it in there because you can't put this in your pocket it's just huge and everything is modern about this motorcycle except for this screen down here which really looks like at first i was like oh it's a throwback it's a throwback to the 80s but the 80s bike didn't have that i still think it might be a, a throwback makes more sense of why they would do this but it just looks very looks very 80s let's go take this thing for a spin i can't wait this is actually my first ride you guys are going to see me ride this thing for the first time and for everyone who was wondering how to get to the gas tank this is not the gas tank the gas tank's down here there's a lever right here this thing pops up Bam, gas tank.
I'm not sure if these bikes just crank slow or if this battery's getting a little low because it hasn't been ridden and I've been starting it a lot without actually riding it. I like the ergonomics of this bike. It's very comfortable. You also notice that the way they have the back seat with that big cushion behind you, that's not really for comfort. That's to make sure you don't fall off the back of the bike because this thing pulls hard. Now, while doing some research on the VMAX, this thing's got a pretty quick zero to 60 and it has a really quick quarter mile time. I was seeing guys with just minor modifications like exhaust running, you know, nine second quarter mile times, which is, that's pretty insane. I mean, it makes sense though. 200 horsepower. Whoa! Man, that thing pulls hard. I didn't even give it all it had. I'm gonna let the tires warm up a little bit and then we'll give it. Man, I'm excited to ride this bike. All right, guys, let's do the words of wisdom. For this reason, you are great, O oh, oh Lord God. For there is none like you, and there is no God beside you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. That is 2 Samuel 7.22. So I'm not sure if this is a rumor or if this is actually a real thing, but rumor has it when they release this motorcycle. Slalom. Uh, uh. Rumor has it when they released this motorcycle and they were kind of showing it off to the dealerships. You know, they brought these bikes as test bikes. They brought these demo bikes with like professional riders out there. They shipped the bike. They shipped the pallet of rear tires. Because they were just doing, they were just going to places, just doing burnouts and just shredding these tires off. That's pretty cool. It's cool that it's one of those things you kind of look at motorcycling and you're like, oh, that's kind of like the, the cringe, the fringe of motorcycling. You know, it's not, they're not treating a bike right, but you know what? They made the bike. That must be what it's for. All right, here's second gear, right? fun and it's so planted though I mean I didn't even notice the front end getting light you know it is a heavy bike it is a longer bike that is so much fun I love this thing the handling feels it, it feels pretty good this is one of those bikes that you may come in this with high expectations it's 200 horsepower it's extremely fast and all these things and it it exceeds those expectations it's just such a cool cool motorcycle but when you uh when you hit it man it goes it really really goes now the back tire is big but it's not it's not that big and um i mean it actually feels it feels very nimble in the corners i can see that if you knew what you were doing you could really uh you know, put some pressure on your sport bike buddies. And that's in the corner. That's in the depth of the corner. This thing pulls hard coming out. So if there's a straightaway, man, it might be game over. Now, if you notice down here, so you got, you got your basic stuff up here. The stuff you really need to see right away. Shift light, which you can see out of your peripheral. Tachometer, digital speedometer. You know, like a normal sport bike would. You come down here, you have all your other gauges that are important. You got your temperature, you got, was that, your tripometer, you got the time, you got your gear indicator, fuel, and how many miles your odometer is at. Ha! Ah. Wow, this thing pulls, even at the higher gears. I'm gonna jump on the highway and do the zero to 60. doesn't stop pulling incredibly hard I mean I, I almost think that I could have done a better 0 to 60 in second starting from second gear and then third gear and fourth gear this this bike just pulls hard in every single gear it is incredible and it is a blast to drive and that little backrest that they give you so you don't fall off the back ends up being really really useful 
Now when they when they designed this bike, they actually could have designed this V4 engine to be 50%. Okay, what they said was it's only 50% balanced because they wanted to give it that. Not that it vibrates, but they wanted to give it that that rumble. You know what I mean? Almost like a like a Ducati type of feel. Could have been smoother. Could have been very, very like perfectly smooth, like a like a Honda or a, Go like a Honda Goldwing. But right now it's got that rumble. They wanted that visceral feeling when you ride. Now when you're just cruising and you're just, you're, you're smooth on the on the idle or on the throttle, it's very very smooth. But when you roll onto it. You just, you know, it makes your, it makes you smile ear to ear and it really lights you up and yes, you know, it, it, it's, it's amazing. It's a great feel. It's a great, uh, I like that they did that. I really do. A lot of times when you drive a vehicle that's too smooth, you don't actually notice how much, how fast it's going or how, uh, how hard it's accelerating. But then you give it a little bit of taste, give it a little bit of vibration, and it just feels like it's going even faster. It's, it just, you gotta try it when you gotta jump on one of these bikes. It's a blast to drive. Guys, if you were wondering what kind of gloves I'm wearing, these are M1 Moto gloves. These are one of the baddest motorcycle gloves out there. The only glove I really protect, I use to protect my hand. It's aligned with Kevlar. We have tested these gloves way beyond what any glove should be tested for and they have held up they're incredibly strong if you want to look at to buy these gloves uh bikesandbeardsgear.com we actually had these gloves manufactured specifically for us this is the only ones out there and there's only one place you could buy them bikesandbeardsgear.com i've been wearing the same pair for at least a year and a half love them all right guys that wraps it up remember it's not what you're riding but where are you going man i'm loving this bike